welcome to CPAC 2023. I'm your host, Amelia Kane, and with me today is Anthony Schaefer. He's the president of the London Center for, um, for Policy and Research. Thank you so much for joining us, Anthony. It's great to be here. It's like deja vu all over again, only three years late, right? I mean, the last time we were here, so it's good to be back in the flesh. So thanks for having me. It's good to be here. Well, thank you. Since the U.S. has left Afghanistan, we've heard and seen the reports of the Taliban using our military equipment. They have. Can you touch on this for us? I What's can. Going on? Well, it's great. Uh, if you're a terrorist and just tuning in, uh, apparently Afghanistan has become like a terrorist Disneyland because, look, you could go and train on all this American gear, you know, the Al-Qaeda, ISIS. Yeah, come on in. It's literally become uh, uh, like a scene out of a Bond movie where you have all the bad guys literally showing up in one ge a geographic location, enjoying the fruits of our labor, literally. And I'm, I wish I was joking, because I joke a lot. This is no joke. Uh, this has become what we feared would happen. Uh, it's a haven for t training of all these terrorist groups. And what's better than 20, was it $38 billion of US hardware that's available to train with? It's a, it's a dream come true for an Al-Qaeda or ISIS operative. That's the sad truth. What do you think the folks at the Pentagon and the Biden administration were thinking allowing this to happen? I don't see any rationale behind it. Well, the rationale was, I think they cut a deal with the Taliban. Basically, uh, they have been known, no, I mean, hear me out, because people get upset when I forecast things and, oh, he's crazy, but he you know, turns out to be right six months later. Indications are that much like the, the Islamic uh, Brotherhood that they partnered with, the Clintons partnered with regarding going against uh, the Egyptian government to turn it all over, the Biden administration did a similar thing with the Taliban. Basically, hey, you guys want to do this, we're just going to let it happen. Because I'm telling you right now, they had intelligence indicating the Afghan government would fall. We know that for a fact. They were told by military leaders, if you step away now with no plan, everything's going to collapse. So if you're told that by the professionals in the military, in the intelligence community, and you do it anyway, it tells me that you were either completely stupid or you cut a deal with someone you shouldn't have cut a deal with. So mine, I believe it's the latter, where they've allowed the Taliban to have great influence and just simply give them dominance over the region, thinking somehow, we're nice to the Taliban, they'll be nice back to us, which again, You don't it's negotiate in the with terrorists. No, you don't. No. And I think that's what we're gonna find the hard way again. Oh man. And also we've been hearing reports, Judicial Watch has actually been reporting, that terrorists are coming through our southern Absolutely. Border. Can you touch on this for us? So one of the things, and again, kudos to you and the investigative work by Chris Farrell and others at the Southwest border, there's been indications even before the Trump administration that, that uh, cartels were working with terrorist organizations to create safe houses and other logistical mechanisms to transit safely, they're safely, not our safely, transit into the United States on a regular and recurring basis. In other words, they've regularized the ability to, to breach our border clandestinely using essentially the narco-terrorists as the ability to support international terrorists. So that's something you guys have reported on. I think it's completely correct at this point in time. No reason to doubt it. What's the United States doing to increase security on our borders? Right. Uh, basically nothing. Uh, that's why Mayorkas, Secretary of, of Homeland Security Mayorkas, is being impeached. Um, I actually did an interview recently with uh, Jim, Jim Jordan, I mean, I'm sorry, with Andy Biggs, and Andy did launch the impeachment, and at this point, they're going to basically unravel all of the negligence hidden in plain sight regarding, oh, we're just incompetent. It's not incompetence. This is a decision that Mike Orcus and the Biden administration has made to leave the border open. When you leave the border open, you encourage human trafficking, drug trafficking, fentanyl from China, and then terrorists. And this is not something that it's that we don't know. We know this. Many of us have recommended that once you get rid of Mayorkas, you have to treat Mexico as a hostile state. Not necessarily because the government's hostile, but the cartels and other organizations which support terrorism do actually run the country pretty much. And we have to accept that as the foundation of our response and our policy, which Mayorkas will never do until he's out of office. It seems as though people don't understand there really is a border crisis. Right. Well, when you see communities literally overrun by thousands of people that they cannot support in 10 cities, which the Biden administration gladly welcomes, uh, it's, it's the fact. And I think this is what the left, even uh, Democrat mayors are yelling about this in Texas, saying our communities cannot sustain this amount of human beings living in our community. So, but the left, 
Small left, big left. Big left doesn't want to talk about it because they see this, I'm going to say it, as the future voters of the Democrat Party. They want a permanent underclass to be there available to basically overwhelm any election that they're involved in to win. That's all about winning from their, from their perspective. It's a sneaky plan, that's for sure. It is. Well, thank you, Tony. We really appreciate well, thank, it. Always great to join you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. And thank you for joining us today. If you want to support our work, please visit judicialwatch.org. Thank you.